So the, the, the car design and build this year has been <coughs> obviously quite a unique experience. We've had um, uh, a lot of things going on last year which, which impacted COVID, of course, have had that impact, but we also had the, the sport being shut down for several months at the beginning of 2020, which put us behind the design cycle of installing a new engine, which was the big sort of headline uh, uh, thing that we needed to achieve on the technical side uh, with this year's car. Um, we had regulations which were ever changing as well, you know, through a period where we had some form of stability and a plan for brand new cars in 2021. But, um, you know, everything got frozen effectively and, and, and carried over, which was quite a, quite a different um, uh, effect to what we were expecting. Uh, and the cost cap began to change as well. So we had a whole range of things thrown at us. Uh, we started late um, because the sport had been, uh, had been closed, rightly closed down for a while. Um, we had um, uh, you know, a lot of work to do with our, our colleagues at Mercedes to begin the process in around about June. Um, we had to do it all from home, of course, so we were designing over the phone and emails and, <laughs> and video conferences, which is a very different situation to, to learn to be in. Um, you know, when you do that, you've got to make sure you've got the IT infrastructure to allow that to happen as well. So it's a huge challenge to get to that point. Um, and you miss those impromptu personal kind of discussions that you can have with people when something springs to mind. So the mindset had to change too. So, so it was an enormous challenge to have to go through that, that design process um, remotely uh, and still somehow get it right and make everything fit together. Uh, it's very complicated doing a power unit inst installation with these, with these things. So um, it, was, it was a hell of a task and it's great to see the car in one piece now after all that. Yeah, so, so I, I, I think the difficulties or challenges, let's say, in, in installing a Mercedes power unit, um, the, the things I've said, you know, the COVID situation, the working from home, the regulation changes. We also had cars homologated, which meant that it was quite a different way of installing an engine because we had to try and stay true to last year's car. But clearly with an awful lot of the car having to change for the engine. So it was a slight compromise in that respect. And you had to try and... Um, take as many surfaces and designs that were homologated on the chassis, on the gearbox and so on, um, but adapt the areas which needed adapting to the engine. Slightly suboptimal in a way, but um, we had some sensible conversations with FIA as we worked through that. Uh, so that was a, an additional challenge. But I, I think any, any power unit installation is, is a challenge because there's no one way of doing these things. They're so complicated that unlike the V8s years back when they're all quite similar, these are quite unique from one power, power unit supplier to another. So we had, um, you know, things like cooling systems are very different between one and another. I've, I've worked with all the power units now and I, I, I know that for a fact. Uh, the architecture of the power units is different. Uh, the energy store shapes and, and, and volumes and positioning and connection even to the engine is different. And so you have to work through all of that installation from a, a physical point of view. But then you've got things like electronics and software. Uh, you've got the load cases going through your drivetrain, which could be different from one engine to another. And all of those challenges had to be faced I in this shortened time period whilst working from home um, to, uh, to try and come out with something that was digitally you know, good, but clearly in, in reality needed to be proven. And, uh, and we managed it. It was a massive effort from the team. It was great support from Mercedes. And um, to get to the to get the point of, of actually installing everything and, and running it for real was a really fantastic achievement, I think. So, so I think I think a key to, to 2021 is is the balance of the 21 versus the 22 car. Uh, we're also doing this in a cost cap, which wasn't the original intent. So it's it's even more of a challenge for everyone. Uh, clearly, it's the same for every team. Um, I, I think really it, it depends on a lot of factors. I mean, we our 22 car has been in design in some way for a long time. The aero process stopped last year, so that's only just ramped up again at the beginning of this year. So there's still a lot to learn there, I think. Um, the 21 car, whilst based on a very familiar set of regulations, did also have aerodynamic changes to it as well from a, a regulation point of view, so we're still learning those to a certain extent. So there's work to be done on both cars. And I think the, the balance normally falls naturally. You can make a strategic decision, and that depends on a lot of factors which, which we still don't know yet. 
but typically uh, I think it falls naturally and a lot will depend on how tight the fight is in 21 which I'm sure is going to be immensely tight um, how the development process looks for the 21 car how much we still realize we've got to learn on the 22 car uh, as, as our knowledge grows so it's going to be a big challenge I think I think we'll be flexible we do have a plan but I think we'll be flexible in our approach and try and uh, minimize the compromise to either car